So welcome to Grumpy Vegan Grandad and what a strange times we're living in right now. But I'd just like to thank every single one of you for following me, for watching my videos, for giving me feedback because that is important to me. I want to hear what you guys have got to say. I want to hear what you guys think about what I say. This is what this channel is all about. It's all about us getting together and thrashing out what's right and what's wrong. What we can do, what we shouldn't do, how we treat people, how we approach the subject of veganism. So a big thank you to everybody who subscribed as of yet. I think I'm up to 365 subscribers at the moment. I'm, um, I always get great comments from you. Um, so anybody new watching this video, please hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, like button and put a comment down below, good or bad. Am I doing a good job? Am I doing a bad job? Let me know. Is there anything you want to want me to talk about? Is there anything you want me to um, think about? Put it in the comment section down below. Scroll down past the other videos. You'll come to the comment section. Type away. Tell me what you think. Okay, that's enough. Let's get into the video. Welcome to Grumpy Vegan Grandad. Tales from the Lorry Cab. Vlog 8, building up quite a collection of these now. So what have I been thinking and mulling over these last few days? Well, I think it's going to be quite obvious. The coronavirus. So the streets have been really, really empty over these last, I think, are we on day five now? Day four of the lockdown? Was it last Friday? Oh, I think we're on day five, aren't we? And the streets have been eerily empty. Everybody's, most of us are doing what we're supposed to do. Stay indoors unless we're having a bit of exercise. Um, got to work only if it's absolutely necessary. I, myself, I'm isolated in my cab and we're all washing our hands and um, using antibacterial hand wash and stuff like that. So we're trying to do the best we can here. But how long is it going to last? The honeymoon period is over. Um, we've spent a week, nearly a week, isolated in our homes, no pubs, no clubs. <coughs> um, so, you know, when when you when you throw a sickie. When you think, ah, I haven't, had a, I haven't had any sick off work for a while, let's uh, let's throw a sickie and have a few days off. It's great. We can, we do things. We we watch the movies. We we go on day trips, and you know, we do, we do things if we throw a sickie, or if we have a week off. But next week, and the week after is when it's going to hit home. For a lot of people, once you've watched and caught up on all your series on Netflix and Amazon and all your uh, terrestrial channels, all your recordings, it's going to start getting a little bit boring. And I used to watch Big Brother. I don't know whether you guys watched it, but I used to love watching Big Brother, especially the celebrity one. Because on the celebrity one, they used to go in... As, as the character is the, the celeb famous um, in a bubble character. And then it only took a week for that mask to drop and the real person come out, the grumpy person, the miserable person, the happy, the deranged, the mad, you know? So I think over the next couple of weeks is when things are really going to hit home. We're going to be bored. We're going to start getting on each other's nerves. You know, it's like when we go on holiday. 
Yeah, so we, we, we're excited and we pack our bags um, and like we, we get up at silly o'clock, even though the flight's not till 12, but we still get up at like six o'clock in the morning because we're excited. And then we get to the airport and then we bump into people who are on the same flight and we're all happy. And then we jump on the plane and we have that long plane ride in them cramped conditions. But we're still happy. And then we get off and we get on that shitty hot coach and we get to the hotel and we get in the room and like, woo, look at our room, look at the pool. And we throw everything in the wardrobe, get our shorts on, straight down to the pool, get a drink, dive in the pool, put the sunscreen on, get on the sunbeds, get our bearings and it's all great for those two weeks. But when we get home, it's like we get on the coach and we don't want to talk to anybody, we're hungover, we, the holiday's over, we get to the airport, we sit there grumpy, get on the plane grumpy, and then we and then we get to the get to the airport at home and we wait for our cases and all the people we were like best friends with on holiday, we don't want to talk to them, we avoid them, we all stand alone and that's what it's going to be like. This is what the next few weeks is going to be like. This is going to be the test. Because it's all new and different. It's like when the snow comes. It's great when the snow first comes. But when it stays for like days and days and weeks, you get fed up with it. And it's not fun anymore. So I think that's what's going to happen. And then people are going to start misbehaving and people are going to start getting drunk and going, fuck it, I'm going, I'm going out on the streets. I'm having a party. Let's have a party in my garden. And this is what's going to happen. I'm over 50 years old. Me, I've, I've, I know how people work now. You get, you tend to judge how people work and you know how things work. You learn, you learn how society operates. And this is what's going to happen. So I'm going to look forward to that because I'll be, I'll be right on my video camera. I'll be right on it. I'm a right nosy bastard. I don't give a fuck. Entertainment. Sit on my doorstep. Watch it all go on. Especially on our estate as well. <laughs> uh, but what's going to happen after? As more and more people get this virus and we become immune and then we're not at risk anymore. Um, can we go out? Can we... Do things, how long is it going to last before things get back to normal? And what's going to happen once things get back to normal? Are people going to take notes? Because I seriously think that this virus is going to be a little bit of a wake-up call to a hell of a, more, a lot of more people who are considering a vegan diet or, or looking at veganism. And I think it's going to hit home that it's what we're doing is wrong. I mean, the best way to tackle this virus if you're not hospitalised is to eat plant-based, to eat, to, to eat your, your antioxidants, your blueberries, your strawberries, your blackberries, you know, your, your, your vegetables, your vitamin C, your oranges, your fruit. That's the best way to tackle it. And if a lot of people are going to go down that route they're going to feel they're going to feel good because it does make you feel good eating plant-based makes you feel good it gives you energy and vitality so they may not change back and another dynamic of this is that are they going to close the slaughterhouses down are they going to shut all these down at the moment just for a temporary period so that there's going to be a lack of meat on the shelves and that's going to force some people who, who, who are totally adamant they, they're going to eat meat. Um, maybe to do plant-based. Because the thing is, once you've tried plant-based food for a couple of weeks, the benefits are so astounding. The changes are so great. I've heard it from so many people. So I think as vegans, once this is all over, we start getting back to normal. Even before them. Even before it's all over, we should be pushing the vegan diet. We should be telling people the benefits of eating certain foods. Build up your knowledge. Look at what certain foods do. Google 
health benefits of blueberries health benefits of strawberries of sweet potatoes of of broccoli of spinach google it get get educated and then spread that word out to other people and then once it's all over then we need to start doing a really big push on veganism we really do i mean there was over a million vegans during veganuary whether some of those have gone back to to meat-based diets i don't know but this snowball can be pushed even further now and i think this is going to be a really really good thing i mean yes some people have died because of it and i really feel for the families and friends and it's not a nice thing to happen that someone should prematurely die because of some virus um it's wrong and it's not a nice thing to happen my dad's at, at, at serious risk he gets one whiff of it he's, he's gonna it's no chance um but we can prevent more of this shit happening underlying problems a lot of people got underlying problems that are caused by eating meat in the first place your cardiovascular disease your type 2 diabetes people who've had strokes um people who've got cancer or have just recovered from cancer you know so this could prevent those people dying in a future pandemic or a future outbreak of some weird virus that has has outwitted the antibiotics and and modern medical medicines we have at the moment so yeah that be my thoughts for today so um get some research done guys spread the word tell people how they can fight this virus tell people how they can build their immune system to fight this virus tell people how they can keep themselves fit and healthy so they don't get the virus in the first place you know they may not get it but they want to keep healthy help people who've gone down the plant-based route to help just in case and tell them how they can carry it on for the rest of their lives grumpy vegan granddad save the animals save the planet save yourself Go vegan.